First Mayor, a quick clarification. Um, you requested the resignation of Mary O'Connor. It was not voluntary. I requested. Okay. Um, just the incident happened November 12th. According to the investigation, you were made aware of the incident on November 30th by Mary right. O'Connor after the media requested body cam footage. Was Mary O'Connor forthcoming enough? Should you have been notified about this incident mm -hmm. sooner? She, uh, my understanding is that she was made aware of the public records uh, request on November 30th, and that's when she called me right after uh, she received that call. And as you stated, the incident occurred on November 12th. So clearly, I would have appreciated not notification earlier. You know, there was great controversy surrounding your appointment of mm -hmm. Mary O'Connor. Um, and despite substantial public outrage, you chose to nominate Mary O'Connor. Um, why were you so adamant that she was the best one for the job? Well, having been in that position in the past and interviewing the candidates that you know had applied for the position, Mary O'Connor was the best candidate. Mary O'Connor had the experience, the skill, uh, the motivation necessary to lead our organization, and she was the right person for the at the right time. You know, we also know the controversy was because of an incident that happened in 1995. Correct. Mary O'Connor was arrested as a rookie police officer charged with battery on a law enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a lot of public outrage. Do you regret your appointment of Mary O'Connor? I don't regret my appointment of Mary O'Connor. I gave her a second chance because I believe that individuals deserve second chances, but really that's why the disappointment runs so deeply. I had uh, very high hopes for uh, Mary O'Connor and she had done good things in her short tenure. She had brought down the gun violent uh, crime. Um, she had improved officer morale, self-initiated activity had improved. Officers took 250 more guns off the street this year than they did last year. She solidified that relationship with the community and the police department, put some great initiatives in place, but all of that pales in comparison to the requirement for integrity that I put in place. You know, some people said it's really not that big of a deal. It was just a license plate on a golf cart. Do you think you would have requested the resignation of the Tampa police chief had there not been that history and that controversy rooting back 25 plus years? That's a hypothetical question, but I looked at this particular incident and it wasn't about a, a traffic stop. It wasn't about a golf cart. It was about integrity. It was about utilizing your authority to try to influence that incident. And we hold all of our employees to the highest standards of professionalism and integrity. And we expect that they will all exhibit those high standards each and every day. And it is imperative that the chief of police do so. Okay, I think you almost covered it. I had a couple more questions here. You know, obviously you've been the Tampa police chief. Um, what does a situation like this do for morale at TPD? Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's a great question. I talked to the staff at TPD this morning prior to the release of this information, let them know that Chief O'Connor had resigned. And what I asked of them was to ensure that they focused on making sure that the 1,400 men and women of the Tampa Police Department continue to provide those stellar services to our community and don't get distracted by this incident. And, you know, th this incident has now made national news. It will continue to do so tonight. Um, what does this do for the reputation of the city of Tampa? Well, you can't let one incident like this um, be reflective of the reputation of the Tampa Police Department. I truly believe that the Tampa Police Department has proven over and over and over again that they are one of the best law enforcement agencies in the nation. And it is very unfortunate that this particular incident, um, you know, is circulating right now. And those individuals that may not know 
how good the Tampa Police Department actually is um, may be forming opinions based on it. Two more questions for you. The totality of this incident, you've watched it, I'm sure, a number of times. You weren't told until nearly three weeks later. Here we are on the back end now. What has been most concerning or most disappointing to you out of the totality of this incident? Well, I think out of the totality of it is using your professional position to try to uh, get out of, of a situation or an issue. Okay. Um, you know, no firm deadline for the chief. We know last time this took, I believe it was like six months. I'm not sure. I know it was lengthy. It's a complicated process right. that you Rightfully just did. So. Yeah. Um, what will you do differently this time around to ensure you get it right? Right. Well, clearly I picked the, the person that was best qualified for uh, the position in the past. And as I, I stated, um, I believe in second chances, but there's no guarantees in those outcomes. And so we will do a very comprehensive and exhausting, exhaustive search, nationwide search. And by saying nationwide search, that doesn't eliminate any internal candidates either. Uh, Tampa Police Department does a great job of succession planning and ensuring that their staff is prepared for additional responsibilities and next steps. And so we'll do a comprehensive search that is very inclusive. Um, bringing in finalists for the community to engage with, um, meet with city council, you know, ensuring that, that everyone that has a relationship with the police department plays a part in uh, the, the police chief uh, determination.